Hello, everyone. I'm really excited to introduce our next speaker. Mr. Mu Chengcheng is Director General of the Digital Currency Institute at the People's Bank of China, where he was appointed in July 2019. Mr. Mu joined the People's Bank of China in 1995. From 1995 to 2004, he worked for the International Department, and his responsibilities covered multilateral and bilateral cooperation with international organizations and foreign central banks. From 2004 to 2006, he was senior advisor to the executive director of the constituency office. In 2006, he rejoined the International Department. From 2010 to 2017, he served in a number of positions, including assistant to the governor and then the deputy director general of the executive office. In 2017, he was appointed as deputy director general of payments and settlements department. Mr. Mu is a member of CPMI, a member of the FSB Financial Innovation Network, and also a member of the IMF's high-level advisory group on finance and technology. Mr. Mu graduated from Renmin University of China with a BA in economics in 1995 and earned his master's degree in applied finance from Akure University in Australia in 2000. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Mu. Mr. Mu, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. It's just a, a real delight to get to speak with you. Thank you. My pleasure. I know the, I know the world is watching with great interest uh, China's development of a central bank digital currency. And the People's Bank of China started researching CBDC uh, six years ago, way back in 2014, uh, very early in the process uh, of global countries looking at this. Can you say a little bit about what motivated the PBOC to begin this work and then what is uh, pushing them, you know, pushing you now to really uh, foster the development of a new currency? Okay, thank you. Well, personally, I uh, would rather to use uh, the, the digital fair currency instead of a CBDC because I think, personally, I think digital fair currency is more suitable for our, uh, 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 you know, digital version of RMB. Mm -hmm. So now we call it uh, ECNY, and uh, the ECNY is the digital version of RMB that is the digital fair currency of China, which, uh, which is a value-based, quasi-account-based, and account-based hybrid legal tender with legally with loosely coupled account linkage issued by the PPC operated and exchanged by the authorized operators, including commercial banks, payment service providers, and telecom operators. So that's the uh, brief uh, introduction of our uh, digital fair currency. And uh, as you mentioned that we, we, we started our uh, project uh, back to six years ago. That's the, the main, the top value cases and drivers for this project is, firstly is to safeguard the monetary sovereignty because you know, back to six years ago, we have so many competitors that private uh, digital or crypto assets uh, uh, came out. And uh, that is definitely a, threat to the monetary sovereignty or independence of our monetary policy of China. So in order to safeguard the monetary sovereignty, we have to start our own version of digital uh, RMB, the ECNY. Secondly, is to provide a backup or redundancy for the retail system, <clears throat> retail payment system. Uh, as you may know, we have Already have we have two big giants in terms of uh, retail payments system sector, uh, which include uh, Alipay and Tenpay, and people now go up to shopping without any credit cards, debit cards, or their wallets with uh, paper notes, paper bank notes, or coins. So those two have already taken. 90, almost 97 or 98 percent of the whole mobile payment markets. So they have already become the 
significant, important financial infrastructure in China. So, but for those, oh, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't think we, we cannot let the private sector to run financial infrastructures, but uh, the problem is all the private sectors, they have their own life cycle. Just in case, if they, they, they have any problems with their financial uh, issues or there's other operational issues or technical issues, that may the out, the, or maybe the operational outage uh, in uh, some cases, that will bring negative impact to the financial stability. So for that reason, as the public goods provider, the central bank have to step up and provide a backup or a redundancy for the retail payment system. So that's the second reason we have to build uh, <clears throat> build our own uh, digital version of RMB as a payment instrument. And uh, thirdly, uh, is to uh, improve the efficiency of the central bank payment system with a wider access and a stronger capacity. Uh, as you may know, we have uh, internationally, we have a trend that the central bank are obliged to provide a, a wider access and a stronger capacity uh, for the payment systems. Uh, before, uh, the introduction of digital currency to the general public, we have the central bank have already built up uh, uh, the wholesale, wholesale payment system like RGGS, the BEPS, or the other uh, retail uh, payment systems like uh, the uh, credit cards payment systems or other uh, fast payment uh, systems. But recently, we, all the all the uh, central banks are trying to uh, widen the access and uh, improve the capacity of the central bank's payment systems. And one of that efforts, one one part of that efforts is to provide access to the general public. So digital currency is definitely part of that effort. So that's the third reason. The last but the not least is to improve the financial inclusion. Because uh, in China, we still, as, as you know, we, 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 we always uh, uh, under, underscore that uh, we are still a developing country. We have still, we have a large part uh, in our country. We have remote areas and poor areas, a lot of population uh, actually is still below, uh, they is still in the, the poor shape, uh, uh, not very good shape in terms of the financial or economic conditions. So in order to improve the financial inclusion, especially, especially those people without a traditional banking account, for those people we have provide basic financial services. So, uh, to, in order to improve the financial inclusion, we have to build or develop our own uh, digital fair currency. So that's the top value cases and drivers for our project. Thank you. Thank you. That uh, is incredibly helpful and informative as people think about the development of the digital RMB. I wonder one of the other factors that people uh, cite about the desire to move forward is about uh, China's, the role of China's currency in the global economy. And do you think that the development of the digital RMB will also help China um, uh, use its own currency in more global transactions to have the digital RMB become more prominent globally? Well, I personally, I have to say I have a different view on that because the internationalization of a currency, like uh, you know, uh, Hank Paulson ever said in his article, that is, the technology is never the the most important key 
for its nationalization of the currency. The, 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 the rules and the architecture or the, uh, the whole uh, financial system actually is the key factors or key elements for it, it internationalization of a currency. So I personally, I don't think the technology is the, the key driver or key uh, elements could improve the internationalization of uh, a currency. Only the rules and the, the system, uh, I mean, all the uh, governance issues, governance uh, issues could be, could be the key of it to improve the internationalization of currency. So before the improvement of the, of the whole system, uh, the technology is never the answer. It's not a panacea for internet, the RMB internationalization. So that's my personal view on this, on, on this issue. Thank you. I think that's um, uh, very helpful uh, as well. I wonder um, for our viewers, if you could uh, give people an update on the development of the digital RMB. I know you've uh, been involved in a number of pilots uh, and that these are expanding. Do you anticipate a national rollout soon? What can you, what can you tell us about the, the status of the work that has been going on in the field? Well, um, uh, PBC, uh, you know, regards the digital RMB or the ECMY as a uh, important financial infrastructure for the future. So we have already uh, actively uh, carried out research and development in the pilot project. And uh, we actually adopted, uh, adopted uh, a rules or, or uh, premise of a two-tier operation, two-tier model. Uh, M0 substitution and controllable uh, anonymity. And uh, we have already finished the, the, uh, the completed the architecture, standard formulation, research and development of uh, the uh, ECNY functionality. And all we, also we have finished the completed the joint debugging and testing of ECNY system. Uh, the, uh, as you may know, the internal close pilots have been run in Shenzhen, Suzhou, Xi'an, Chengdu, and also uh, this will be uh, uh, conducted in the fall, forthcoming Winter Olympics in Beijing. And uh, at present, the pilots have made positive progress and uh, we have already created a series of uh, use cases and uh, a variety of safe and convenient payment functions. Uh, as of late September 2020, more than 12,000 pilot user cases have been implemented covering bill payments, catering services, transportation, shopping, government services, and others. And uh, aggregates of uh, 172 and 400 personal or individual digital wallets and uh, 16,000 corporate digital wallets have been opened. In addition, uh, more than 4.7 million transactions were processed uh, with a total amount of uh, RMB 2.3 billion. So, and uh, we have already developed multiple payment methods such as QR codes, uh, facial recognition, tap and go, such kind of functionality, some such kind of uh, payment functions. In addition, in addition, in order to show gratitude and respect to the medical and health care healthcare workers who have made significant contribution to the fight against the COVID-19, uh, we have recently launched the ECNY Red Packet Red Packets pilot project in cooperation with Luohu District of uh, Shenzhen, and some 5,000 5, medical and health care workers received alarms in the format of ECNY Red Packets provided by the fiscal support by the municipal, municipal government of Shenzhen. It could be used as 
at designated merchants in Luohu district. Uh, in October 2020, we also launched another round of ECNY wrap packets uh, pilot, also supported by the fiscal funds of Luohu district of Shenzhen. Some 50,000 lucky residents, uh, they won the lottery, received uh, ECNY wrap packets worth uh, 200 yuan, that is 20, 29.9 US dollars each. So that's the uh, recent update, our development of the ECNY pilot projects. Thank you. There's an enormous amount of uh, work going on in, in so many different uh, uh, strategies that uh, you're pursuing at the same time. Do you, um, do you foresee uh, in the near future this going nationwide or do you think that you will continue to explore pilots for a period of time? Yeah, we, we so far we don't have very clear uh, uh, agenda or timetable for the rollout in the whole uh, country, the nation, nationwide. Uh, we are going to uh, next, next stage uh, based on the previous uh, previous uh, results of the uh, pilots, we may extend the pilots to more cities and uh, more banks. Thank you. I know a number of countries around the world are also considering central bank digital currencies or, or uh, digital fiat currencies, as you said. And they're looking with uh, interest at the different approaches that you've taken and that other countries have taken there are uh, different design features in the Chinese system that I think are quite important. I wonder if you could explain the basic design feature and maybe provide advice about why you believed that that design structure was appropriate for China. Well, thank you for that. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, firstly, I think we adopted a very important uh, model, which is we call it two-tier model. And maybe some people will call it hybrid model, uh, we, but we call it two-tier model, which had, is, uh, is quite different from the uh, other, other countries' uh, uh, hybrid model. That is, uh, 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 PBC and the commercial institutions, uh, will, the PBC will work as the, uh, the first layer, layer or first tier of that model. And the commercial institutions will uh, work as the second tier of that model. I think that that's the suitable approach to the ECNY operation in China because that will it's different from the decentralized issuance of crypto assets, definitely. Uh, so that is a intermediate solution to provide, uh, providing for di direct claims on the central bank while real-time payments are handled by the intermediaries. The general public could exchange ECNY from the authorized operators. Uh, that's the second tier, who could exchange the same amount ECNY from the central bank. And as consumers have a direct claim on the central bank, and this it not, will not change the current creditor debtor relationship in currency circulation. And this ECNY will not change the existing currency circulation system and the two tier account structure or create competition with commercial banks in the savings market. Uh, in, in another words, a two-tier ECNY will not increase banks' re reliance on the interbank borrowing or affect their lending capacities. So this intermediation can, could be avoided. And since it will not affect the existing monetary policy transformation mechanism or intensify the pro cyclicality uh, in, uh, in different stress scenario, issuing, uh, issuance ECNY will not lead to any negative impact on, on the way of the real economy operates. To avoid the crowding out effect on bank deposits, 
arbitrage trading and rise in pro cyclicality, the use of ECNY will not be limited to small retail transactions by setting maximum, maximum daily and yearly limits and introducing policies that ECNY conversions exceeding a certain amount can only be processed by appointment. If necessary, multi-tier uh, charges may be introduced, especially in the time of stress uh, for uh, the for small and some and low frequency transactions can be processed free of charge. But service fees can be charged on, la on large or high frequency transactions, especially during the uh, during back rent to increase the exchange cost and system friction to avoid any background or uh, crowding out uh, effect in terms of the bank savings market. So that's the that our key design uh, of uh, the two tier model. So that's the the first uh, you know design architecture of our our ECNY system. Uh, <clears throat> secondly, uh, our ECNY will be positioned as uh, M0, mainly as uh, M0. So in that case, uh, as M0, that is the uh, banknotes in circulation and coins in circulation, mainly the, the, the coins in circulation and banknotes in circulation, also the, the required reserve in, in the central bank. So the the since it's a position to M0, that means the ECNY will be the use cases will limit will be limited to small retail transactions domestically. So we are going to focus on the domestic retail markets instead of the wholesale market and uh, also internationally use cases. So it's not for, we are going to focus on the domestic uh, retail sector, not internationally, as you haven't mentioned that, whether that will be a key driver for the internationalization of RMB. So firstly, I will focus on, on the domestic market. If in the future, there is demand for cross-border payments, because definitely digi digital fiat currency is, uh, uh, is born to be used uh, for cross-border payments. But if uh, there's demand requirements uh, for us to, to be used for cross-border payments, firstly, we have to talk to the local monetary authority or the local central banks before we can extend to the cross-border use, use cases because we have to respect the local uh, supervision and we have to respect the independence or sovereignty of their monetary policy. So that's, that's why, that's the reason we develop our own ECNY is also, we cannot do that to other countries without a, a uh, prepared coordination or well-coordinated mechanism, especially for the exchange mechanism. So that's the first implication of the position as M0. Secondly, because it's a position as M0, we have to observe the same uh, regulations as M0. So all the cash regulation, the rules, the, the, uh, the laws will apply to the E S N Y. But we have to comply with all the existing M0 rules and regulations. That's also include the ML and uh, CFT rules of the M0. So we have to comply with that, with that, with the, all those uh, regulations and rules, the KYC rules. And thirdly, since it says it's positioned as M0, so there was there will be no interest be paid to the holders of ECNY. 
And since it's uh, M0, so the exchange function will be uh, carried out uh, by the commercial banks because in the bank notes, in the era of uh, paper bank notes and coins, it's the responsibility of the commercial banks who, who are going to exchange the bank, bank notes and coins to the general public. So those PSPs, the payment service providers, the telecom operators, they are not the person, not the institution who are going to exchange the ECNY to the general public. But the transactions, but the, the circulation services could be done, could be carried out by the commercial banks and the PSPs and the telecom operators and other uh, financial institutions. So those are the implications of, of the M0. Uh, beside that, besides that uh, the central bank will not charge any fees from the services providing to the general public that will not ch charge anything for exchange and the circulation uh, of the ECNY among the uh, individuals or the general public. Um, that's uh, very helpful in understanding the path you're on. I wonder whether you could touch on an aspect of the design related to privacy. Uh, some people prefer the anonymity of cash or maybe they want a private uh, cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. How do you think about the privacy aspects of offering a digital RMB? Well, uh, definitely uh, we have to uh, respect the, uh, the demands of the general public in terms of uh, anonymity, in terms of uh, payment services. And uh, we adopted a policy that is, we call it a controllable anonymity uh, for the ECNY. Uh, that that's to you know uh, the ECNY transactions uh, may jeopardize uh, the personal. I mean the uh, digital currency transactions may jeopardize the personal data and privacy, and uh, so we have to have a better design to protect the, the personal privacy and data. And at the same time, uh, uh, you know, we have to strike a balance because a complete anonymity will encourage criminal activities such as tax evasion, terrorist financing, and then money laundering. So the only way to strike a balance between the two uh, is to keep the degree of anonymity within a controllable range namely that is for the uh, large sum transactions, we have to do the KYC completely. That means the, the transactions, the large sum transaction has to be done with their real name, real identity. But for small sum daily use transactions, uh, people could choose to remain anonymous. So that's the uh, key design, our principle. Um, the, uh, of course, and also the authorized operators, we call it the second tier is author, authorized operators. They will perform QIC responsibilities and store their own data locally. And uh, they will submit all the data to the central bank via asynchronous synchronous, NOS. Uh, transaction uh, transmission on a timely basis. They will allow the central bank to keep a track of necessary data to Im implement prudent regulation and uh, combat on money laundering and other criminal offenses and uh, illicit transactions. But at the same time, we have to respect the, the demand of uh, to remain uh, anonymous for uh, legitimate transactions. So that's the rules of our, of our views on the uh, privacy issue. 
Thank you. You know, a major theme of the conference we're having over the next few days is financial inclusion and the ways that central banks might advance financial inclusion uh, in their own economies. You mentioned at the outset that you think that the digital RMB may help with financial inclusion. Uh, others are worried that moving to digital currencies uh, will leave more people out who are not technologically connected or don't have access to the financial system in different ways. How are you thinking about uh, working on the digital RMB in such a way that financial inclusion is a central goal, that the design features can help advance financial inclusion rather than leaving people out? Of course, it's, uh, as I said, it's the main driver of all, all the top value cases for us to develop uh, the ECNY. So, uh, due to our ECNY's property characterization and the loosely coupled account linkage, uh, the general public could apply for digital wallets without opening a banking, banking account. Therefore, the issues of ECNY and the offline payment function will enable the underbanked population in poor and remote areas with poor coverage of telecom networks to enjoy basic financial services, improving the financial inclusion. And the ECNY could provide functions that e-wallets e cannot, such as a offline payment function, dual offline payment function, and smart contracts which serve currency uh, functions such as conditional payment and scheduled payment. So for those people, you know, we have a lot of pop population in remote areas. They don't have any traditional bank accounts. So traditionally, they are underbanked because bank cannot provide services for those people without a banking account. But since we are loosely coupled, is is decoupled from the uh, the traditional banking account. People can open a digital wallet without a banking account. That means those uh, uh, subsidy, subsidies or allowances for those poor people could be uh, sent to their digital wallet without a banking account support so that people could enjoy some basic financial uh, services and uh, also the fiscal support from the government. So definitely that will improve the, uh, the, the financial inclusion. Uh, beyond that, uh, because ECNY is a value-based quasi and full account-based hybrid payment instrument that could be also is loosely coupled from the banking accounts. So it, it doesn't rely on the banking accounts for fund transfer. Therefore, for the perspective of a settlement finality, the settlement is complete, uh, it will be completed as the very moment of the payment is completed. So for the financial finality confirmation by the RTGS is no more required. For those small merchants, especially the, the small and the medium enterprises, the working capital turnover efficiency could be improved. So that case that also will provide some support to the financial inclusion. That's a very comprehensive approach to financial inclusion. I think there are many important lessons there that others around the world want to look to and examine, explore, and see whether it works in their own uh, systems. Uh, obviously, each, each system is unique, uh, and people will have to develop their own path, uh, but I do think there are many important lessons there. We are almost uh, done with our time. I wonder whether you have any final words you want to uh, leave us with to convey to the participants in the conference. Okay, uh, uh, I know people are, uh, especially those uh, media uh, is exaggerated on the uh, internationalization effect of uh, ECNY, uh, you know, to the to the RMB, but. Uh, as I said, uh, we need a international uh, 
uh, coordination. We need, we, we call for international cooperation in terms of uh, the development of uh, digital currency or digital fair currency. Uh, and so in that case, if we can uh, cooperate together, we can improve the interoperability among the digital fair currency or CBDCs among different countries. And we can improve the efficiency and we can improve the transparency. And we can reduce the cost of the, uh, the cross-border payments. So can we can make the whole world better and we can stimulate or improve the international trade to make people's uh, lives better. So we are looking forward to have a better coordination, a better cooperation among different uh, central banks and international organizations. Thank you. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your participation in the conference. Uh, your remarks are quite insightful and I think will help our listeners really around the world understand the work that it, China is uh, work proceeding on, on the digital RMB. And I know that we'll um, have many such issues to discuss in the coming years. So thank you so much for participating in the conference today. Thank you.